How's it going? Hello once again. It is Nate Mumford, Director of Sales Engineering here at RCS in quarantine, ready for another Q&A, questions and answers in the time of remote workflows. I hope you're, you and your friends and your family are healthy and safe and, and doing good out there. As you know, we're doing this every single Thursday, kind of treating like, you know, like office hours, if you will. So, we're here to help out. Any questions you have, any topics you want covered, of course, you can always email us live at rcsworks.com. You can also comment below if you have any questions or, as always, direct message us as well. With any of your questions, comments, future topics you want covered, all of that good stuff. A little housekeeping to get out of the way first. Just want to remind you that our uh, FTS, our Field Technician Services team, it's kind of actually running back to normal, surprisingly enough. So, as you know, we demonstrated a couple weeks ago, we do have that new FTS portal for installations, kind of get everybody nice and organized so that we really efficiently get you from point A to point B so you can utilize uh, Zeta or any of our RCS products as well. But if you want to have back on site, we got gloves, we got RCS masks, we are equipped with hand sanitizer. Um, we've done a couple installs already too, so I want to make sure I point that out. So in case... You're concerned about doing kind of upgrades or installations. Yes, our FTS team will be on site, can be on site. Of course, if you don't want them to, we can always do that remotely as well through our field technicians portal. So uh, I got some really cool things coming down the pipeline. Just want to point that out there. Um, we got some really cool stuff with Zeta Cloud Infrastructure, talking about some hybrid models. Um, we also have some other uh, really cool things with Zeta Cloud and voice tracking to your local Zeta. That's also coming down the pipeline as well. If you've got any topics you want covered, please reach out to us. We'd love to get your input on some of these Facebook Lives as we continue to do these for the upcoming weeks. we got some really great topics for you to talk about. So as I said in my teaser Facebook Live video yesterday, um, you know today we're going to talk about G Selector and talk about a couple tips and tricks regarding some scheduling practices. And you might notice, by the way, before I forget, that I, I'm in a really good mood this morning. I woke up great, so I'm in a festive I don't think you can see based on like the Facebook live camera that I have here. I mean, you'd rather see, you know, the G selector than my ugly mug, but I do have, I'm sporting my pink flamingo shirt um, because it's like 75 and just a couple clouds in the sky and sunny. It's perfect weather here uh, in Connecticut. So again, comments, questions, get them in there. Uh, I'll be checking my uh, Facebook live feed as well. So I thought today we would talk about summer is here. Let's talk about some kind of unique scheduling you know, that weekend scheduling, um, unique, you know, weekend programming, if you will. So I thought we would talk about twofers, talk about also your kick grids, and talk about maybe some unique uh, patterns. Both of these came from some of our uh, RCS clients who are, had some questions for us. So I thought, well, if they have questions, you probably have questions as well. Um, what do you want to talk about first? Should we do twofers? It's kind of quick. Uh, twofers, first off, in case you don't know, setup, station, features. Um, that is going to be features and twofers. Again, I have my G selector on dark mode. You can see here, there's twofers right here. This is a settings window. You want to make sure you enable this first, obviously, to open up the twofer scheduling. What are twofers? Twofers are essentially a way of having the same artist back to back. Think of a double shot Tuesday in classic rock format. So, for example, if I wanted to play Queen followed by another Queen record, I can do that using twofers, right? So you might have seen that in and on around G Selector. Of course, twofers really can mean threefers, fourfers, whatever many you want. The way it works in G Selector is essentially a twofer will just use the artist that previously was scheduled. So you just want to make sure in your clock structure you always have the very first element is what you want. And then the second element, that's going to be the twofer. And if you want an additional, you have another twofer in the position afterwards. So it would look essentially, and we'll do this in a second, it would be the main category, twofer, twofer. And each twofer will respect the previous artist or vocalist in that twofer that is scheduled. Um, so for example here, again, setup, station, features, twofer. I'm going to allow twofers. And there's a really important setting here that I like to showcase. What are you matching on? Are you matching on artist or vocalist? And it's a very important, subtle note. And there's really no wrong answer, by the way, too. So, for example, I always use the example of Soundgarden and Chris Cornell. Because you can tell how the, the Chris Cornell 
solo project is a little bit different than that of real sound garden so to speak if you're doing an eagles again some don henley could be different from the eagles but what you want to do here is by matching an artist you're saying if i play sound garden i want to go and schedule a sound garden record next if i choose vocalist that means i'm allowing g selector to possibly schedule a sound garden song followed by a chris cornell song right it's a little bit different it's very subtle and again there's no wrong answer here it really depends on your station right if you're having more of an exotic weekend perhaps you want to use vocalist if you're a traditional classic rock station you might find that matching an artist is a little bit better because you might have those you know more focused if you will transitions there so uh, but again, it's all up to you, whatever you want to do. So that's an important feature there. Again, setup station features twofers, allow twofers, and then match with vocalist or match with artist. Um, let's see, I got a question from Rich here. Hello, Rich. Um, what would you use mini logs for? Mini logs are in Zeta. Remember, there's shows and there's mini logs. Shows and mini logs are just essentially a way where you can do a collection of events uh, in sequential order. You can do transitions. You can also voice track uh, on them as well. The key there is you can have X number of elements. And when you drag the show or mini log into the schedule, you're taking that one drag and drop to include every single asset in there. The key difference between shows and mini logs, mini logs have time stamp abilities. So for example, if you're doing a sporting event, we usually recommend using mini logs because we can set a top of the hour. We can set kind of an exact time marker that will then queue up some um, uh, traffic logs for those uh, the sporting events. Um, I'll open that up in a second, Rich. I'll show you a screenshot um, uh, for future reference. I'll comment for you. I'll put a screenshot of the mini logs and show you exactly what I mean using a baseball log example. So hopefully that answers your question, Rich. So moving back to two first here, I'm gonna jump to my clock section. Let's build a generic clock for right now and talk about how those two first schedule. I have a generic, pretty simple clock here called Sunday morning. I'm gonna go and work smarter, not harder. I'm gonna save this clock as. I'm gonna call it two first for right now. Don't worry about all that extra metadata stuff there. I'm gonna save this clock. First thing I'm gonna do there, because I wanna make sure that I save this clock in G Selector. And so I have my two first. And now the very first song is very, very important in this process. Because what are we doing here? What is the weekend? Let's do a double shot weekend. Pretty classic for classic rock and classic hit stations. The idea there is that, let's say the top of the hour, I'm always gonna play this one element followed by the same artist or same vocalist. Now, one of the questions we had is, well, how, what do I want to schedule in that first position? So in this example here, <clears throat> I'm just calling for the category hits. It's pretty generic. Now, what if hits included a one-hit wonder? By default, if I play the hits, and then the second position here, I'm going to click on that first type dropdown. I'm going to go to, uh, where is my twofers? Right there. And you can see there's no option in there because twofers by default will respect the previous scheduled position. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to have a hits will schedule locally, normally, as is. Then it's going to schedule my two furs right below that. And, of course, I wanted to have, let's say, a triple shot weekend. I just go and schedule one more two fur. This two fur will respect this two fur, which respects this position. Thus why it's so important. So the question becomes is, all right, if I have a one hit wonder in the hits and then I have a two fur below that, Obviously, by default, one hit wonders, there's no second track. Thus, G Selector has nothing to choose from. Thus, that twofer gets left on schedule. That's normal default behavior. So, what if I really wanted to focus, right? Again, that theme weekend, so to speak. Well, what I can do here is jump in my library. I am going to save my changes. In my library, I can use this browse list here. I like using browse lists just to isolate certain songs. It's a drag and drop. It's a great tool because I can save my work and come back to it. Um, if you're advanced, you can also use the uh, legacy uh, in G Selector, the legacy library mode, which is those checkboxes. 
and then you can utilize that Christmas tree stamp that's there. It's really no wrong way in how you do it, but the idea here is we're isolating elements. So let's just say we're having a double, triple shot weekend. There's really artists that we really care about. So maybe, for example, like I care about the killers. I want to include them as part of the double shot weekend. And then from there, uh, maybe it's Green Day. Yes, Green Day. I want to be part of this. What I can do with this browse list, as you can see here, I'm just going to kind of recap a little bit. I'll just save this as Facebook Live Test 1. And then what I can do is, under here in this filter, this Facebook Live Test 1, I have essentially two songs. I go to my multi-song changer. That's library, multi-song changer. And then I can go and let's say under uh, attributes here, I think I have, I can't remember if my theme is station or it is here. Okay, great. So it's a global setting in, my, in this particular station. So what I have here is there's a theme. I could just hit a plus here, do theme and say double shot weekend, right? Hit okay, hit close. I can save this right here. Do I want to take a backup? Um, yep, I'm all good. And then, so there we go. That is saved. So now I have that, essentially that theme of really kind of core songs. And going back to we're talking about attributes, like what are attributes? They can be whatever you want it to be. So for example, you can have a theme, core songs that are playing during Double Shot Weekend or whatever you want it to do. So in that example here, let's just say we have those one-hit wonders. Well, I created a theme where I know it's only songs that I care about for my Double Shot Weekend. Again, that's a drop down there, you can see. And then that twofer will still respect the artist or vocalist from the previous scheduled element. In this case, only elements that I care about, right? So you can start seeing where that control comes from. I'm not picking from a generic pool. I have actual you know, control of the scheduling process. Uh, going back to questions here. <laughs> ah, okay. Thank you, Derek. Derek was replying to Rich in regards to that mini log comment. So thank you. Appreciate that, uh, Derek. Um, so anyway, that's kind of the two for ideas that we essentially reference the previous elements and then so on and so forth. And again, talking about how important that very first schedule element is. Now, one other tweak, we get a lot of times people will call in and they'll say, okay, I did my twofers, and either A, there's just a couple things that we don't really like transition-wise, or things aren't scheduling. And for that, we're going to go to our goals, and then go to our categories, and then we're going to go from here. You'll notice when I enable the twofer, I have a twofer day part. This is really, really, really important because this is what we're grabbing from the pool of all of the songs in the two for category, so to speak. So you can see here, like I have all these elements. Now this is a demo database, but let's just say I have the hold category. I have, I don't know, 50, 100 songs in the hold category. I don't want those songs to schedule. Well, what I can do here is I can block that category from playing. See that? I'm just left clicking on the check mark in the kind of the Ghostbusters uh, ban element there, and I can save this. So reviewing here, for my two for day part, which is just any two for being scheduled, in the grid default, I cannot schedule a two for in the Z category. See how that works? So you might go in there, for example, Christmas categories. A lot of stations have that where it's pulling Christmas music. You don't want the two first pulling in Christmas music. You don't. The other option there, of course, would be is you just, you know, inactivate anything that, uh, or deactivate or inactive any element you don't want scheduled in general, and it won't pop up. But we all know daily maintenance, things get in there, and we just kind of forget about it. So again, it's important to either ban it by category or using this old section here. Don't forget, I could always ban a song right individual. So for example, if there is, let's say, a live category, maybe you have an acoustic Sunday morning category that you're okay for a double shot weekend to choose from, but maybe there's something like Tears in Heaven or something is just not fitting the vibe of your weekend. What I can do here is go into that category, find Tears in Heaven, block it, and then we're good to go. So that's really important in regards to I have elements that are scheduling in my twofers that I don't like. That's what you want to make note of right there. Uh, now the flip side is 
I have, let's just say, Bon Jovi, classic hit station or classic rock station. I have Bon Jovi followed by Bon Jovi. I'm doing a triple shot weekend, and for some reason, the third twofer never schedules. I have elements there from Bon Jovi I can schedule. It just doesn't do it. Why? And that's because we got to go back to our goals and priority lists. Don't forget, a lot of people have these default priority lists. If I go to my assignment, you'll see here, I'm just going to hit the plus. There is a two for day part in our priority list. Now, think about this. If I'm scheduling normally as is, just a nine to five, Monday through Sunday, all that good stuff. If I play on my station, I might have a band that's like, okay, don't play hair metal into hair metal, which it makes perfect sense when you have a classic rock station or a classic hit station. But what if I have, in this scenario, again, triple shot weekend, I have a Bon Jovi, I have a Bon Jovi, but then I have an unscheduled. Why is that? I've seen this a lot. Playing a hair metal into a hair metal is a breakable rule. Hair metal into hair metal into hair metal. Aha, that's an unbreakable move, right? Then all of a sudden, when I have a triple shot weekend, I don't have that third Bon Jovi song because by default, it's going to schedule the second one because G Selector's allowed to. It's a, it's a breakable rule. But the third one is an unbreakable rule. So a little tip for you, what I like to do here, again, goals, priorities, definition. Again, work smarter, not harder. I'm going to copy this priority list, call it twofers, hit OK. And then what I'll do here is any of those sound codes, that's when I'll start deleting those sound codes from the twofer priority list. And then don't forget too, we do have to assign it here. Again, drop down, twofers, pick all day parts because whatever you have your twofer scheduled, have the twofer option there, hit OK. And you'll see the twofers are respecting the twofers priority list, which has no segue bands. Make sense? Awesome. Um, let's see here. CHBN. Hello, guys from CHBN. How's it going? Um, oh, you guys are <laughs> you guys are liking the uh, you guys are definitely liking the uh, mini logs. We'll talk about those later, maybe. Um, yes, exactly. Living on a prayer, Bon Jovi. You can't go wrong with a triple shot of Bon Jovi these days. Thank you, Die. So uh, we, caught, we talked about two first. Um, any questions you got in there, feel free to come in. Scott, good morning. Uh, Scott, by the way, will hopefully be joining us, I believe, next week. We're going to be doing a Zeta Cloud kind of hybrid infrastructure with uh, Zeta to go, local Zeta, and Zeta Cloud. It's going to be really cool about that. If you're an engineer, for perchance, you're going to want to check that out. So let's talk about, uh, very briefly here, We had, this came up in conversation with one of, uh, one of my clients, um, kick grids, right? I mean, when they're working correctly, they're very straightforward. The kick grids are literally just going to be Okay, 24-7, here you go. But the reality is that we always have something kind of in the way that's disrupting the normal workflow. And don't forget, G Selector, it's a piece of software. There are some human elements that we can tell it, but also some human elements that it's going to go and calculate based on what we tell it to do. So I created two disabled and slotted categories. So what I have here is I have Power Knights and Power Slotted. The Powered Slotted is just my generic power category. <clears throat> I call it two for hour all throughout the day. They're disabled and slotted. Disabled and slotted just means that I don't care about any goals, any rules. I want you to play one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. <coughs> Excuse me. So what we can do is in the Powered Slotted, if I go to my Kick Override, I then have an option here for automatic and manual kick. And so hopefully you can see this here. I know it's a little small on that screen here. Uh, so what we can do here is I'm going to look at first my date. And you can see that Sunday I have my morning show on Sunday. I can have an acoustic sunrise. I can have a PSA. And then I also have Saturday night. So I can have, let's say, a Saturday night show or something. And that involves where, you know, some remix show, whatever it may be. Now, G Selector will do its best with the automatic kicks to say, okay, well, I'm not playing any music in these hours or these hours. You and I both know that some of these songs are getting played. Sometimes they're not. But what I care about in the kick 24-7 window, what I care about is maintaining those rotations. And one of the things I like to showcase here is people call and they say, just simple here, Saturday and Sunday, I have two A's back to back. 
plus it's a weekend, that's an important yesterday same hour. So, of course, if I have any rules in place, that would make sense. But in this scenario, I'm disabled. I'm slotted. I don't have that yesterday same hour rule. So what do I do? Well, I can go and tweak this. And maybe I go on Saturday at 10 a.m. and just jump and do it at a kick to that to that section. Yeah, I can do that there just like this. But then all of a sudden, but wait a second, I skipped that A. And this is a prime day part. I'm playing my A at 7 a.m. and not again until 12. I'm missing that spin. I don't want that. That's a primary day part for me. So let's talk about how to get back on track. Well, look at the 6 a.m. Based on these rotations, I mean, this is CD. This should be EA, BC, DE, AB. Aha. Sunday, 10 a.m., based on the 24-7 rotation, that should be a C, right? So I'll hit one, two, three. Now my C is the first kick order to restart that sequential pattern, right? Now, you might ask yourself, oh, wait, Nate, you just said yourself you don't want to skip that position in a primary day part. But did I skip it? Think about that. I have nothing here scheduled, nothing here scheduled, nothing here scheduled, nothing here scheduled. I'm not really skipping the element. I'm progressing where I am in that 24-7 pattern, right? And the same token, if I'm here at 8 p.m. on a Saturday, right, this should be CD. This should be EA. BC, this right here should be DE. I'll do one kick and maintain that pattern. And all of a sudden, you'll see that staircase. Aha, there's that staircase pattern that I like, right? Because again, I'm respecting the 24-7 kick pattern. So a lot of times we get people calling in and saying, well, I have a lot of back-to-backs and have all these issues going on. And I thought I had the kick grid right. Or you have the automatic kick enabled and it's just not really where you want it to be. And that's because, well, you've taken away the 24 seven rotation there with some outside programming. G selectors doing its best to tell you, well, based on what you gave me, this is what I, I think is the best case scenario, right? So again, in that scenario, when you have gaps missing in your schedule, sometimes it's best to continue the pattern as is. If this was a two and one, for example, if my kick grid was uh, two powers, then one power, then two powers, I mean, this would simply be uh, D, E, this would be A, B, C, D, E, A, and then again, this would be a B right here. Now, I know I'm throwing a lot of letters out there, and that's why we have these music notes up here too to see the overall rotations. So just so you know, that's a really cool tool for you to look at that. Hello, Horacio. How's it going? Horacio and I have an ongoing joke about chupacabras. I have to throw it out there my Facebook Live or else it would be no fun for Horacio. Um, so the second example I give is a category that utilizes a kick grid, but we don't play it very often. In this circumstance, it's my power night category. I personally use this when I was a programmer to get those extra spins in, but also in my current day part where I was, there was a different tone. We kind of had a top 40 hot AC hybrid at night because we wanted to kind of get that, you know, as a heritage station, we want to get that local crowd at night. Um, noted. Thank you, Di. Um, and so what we have here is this is going to be essentially an overnight category. And this overnight category is essentially a, this is not playing during the day. As you can see, it's not playing on the weekend evening either. Now, when I have my automatic kick, it works perfectly in this scenario. But what if I didn't have an automatic kick? You can see if I start my day, my kick start day, that's why we kick that date at the very top. You can see that everything is lined up in a row, right? That's the, we don't want that. That's bad. And I could go through all this and say A, B, C, D, E, you know, all this stuff. But the reality is, is why? Don't waste your time there. It's a completely new day part. If you're listening at 3 a.m. and you're listening at 7 p.m., nobody's going to knock you for, I heard the same exact song at 3 a.m. and 7 p.m. They're just not going to do that. Different listening patterns. So might as well start at 7 p.m. because that's the day part you care about, right? So might as well at 7 p.m. start that grid. 
So BCA, BC is fine. I'll jump to uh, here was this Thursday, and I'll just essentially do one kick, right? So that didn't like it for whatever reason. I'll do one more, or maybe do it somewhere in there. I can always do, let's see here. And again, I can always just jump this around based on my kickstart day. Yeah, I can do it up there. But you can start seeing where I can jump some of these if I wanted to. So if there's a B, I can do, do right, it's all in a row, yeah. It, I'm not going to lie, it took me a couple minutes to actually purposely not schedule something in a perfect staircase pattern. <laughs> it's it's funny, when you're trying to get a clock structure, you're like, okay, I'll just do this, and that's how I get my grid. And you're like, okay, what if I want to do the opposite? And then you have to create things from scratch poorly. It's pretty entertaining. But in the end, I can send you to my automatic kick grid, and you can see in here, this is the perfect grid, right? I got 1A, 1B, 1C. There's the staircase pattern. What I'm getting at here is if you have a huge gap in the center, sometimes it's easier to start at your 7 p.m., the primary day part, and then just essentially, again, adjust those kicks. If I'm looking at Wednesday with a kick at 1B, I don't care because it hasn't played the entire day. And nobody, again, is going to knock you for a 3 a.m. I heard a song, and at 7 p.m. I heard the same exact song. They're just not going to knock you on that. They're really not. So that's a way of having it where you can essentially use your 24-7 uh, kick grid pattern to essentially adjust um, the schedule here. So makes sense, right? Pass order, just to remind you here, I'm going to hit cancel on this for right now. It's the one, two down arrow, category group settings, featured under goals, categories. And you can see here, I have disabled and slotted. I can change those just like this, schedule, slotted. And while we're here, we might as well note, see a little icon down there? And you might notice you hover over it, it says it conflicts. By default, in G Selector, when it's disabled and it's slotted, it will essentially just go and schedule everything in order and then continue on the schedule. If you have two categories, both in here, and yet one is ignore all of the goals and rules, and the other is respect the goals and rules, there is a conflict there. Think about that for a second. I'm telling G Selector, ignore everything, but in the same pass order, don't ignore everything thus the error we get down here and you can always go and just move that up or down or in this circumstance i'll move it back to disabled and slotted that error goes away pretty common that's why it blinks in there to give you a heads up um just you know stuff that's in the mix so uh i'm just about 30 minutes uh, i'm gonna recap here some of my comments if you have any other comments you want to get in let me know again thank you to rich derek and uh, chbn for checking in um, and if you guys have any future topics you want covered, let me know. Get your last minute questions in uh, as I do my little recap in here. Of course, you can always email us live at rcsworks.com. You can always direct message us as well. And uh, anything is on the table. So don't forget, we got uh, G Selector. We have Revma, which is our online streaming provider. We have Zeta, Zeta to go, Zeta Cloud, Selector to go, Acquira. I mean, the whole list of products goes on and on. So whatever you have questions on, I got some answers. Let me know. And as I said, we got some really cool things coming down the pipeline uh, with Scott, who we commented here earlier, doing some Zeta hybrid infrastructure. Uh, you don't want to miss that. And then also we have some Zeta cloud voice tracking to debut. That's probably going to be in about two weeks or so. And then more G Selector tips and tricks as well. So uh, as always, videos are archived. And last call for comments. I think we're good. I will see you next Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Questions and answers during a time of remote workflows. Thank you so much for uh, checking this out, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.